The UN's refugee agency says that donors have not been fast enough in responding to the emergency in Sudan. The UNHCR statement comes as Sudan's warring side signed an agreement to protect civilians and the movement of humanitarian aid. It follows several days of talks in Saudi Arabia between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. Many civilians have been trapped by nearly a month of fighting. Heba Morgan has more from Umdurman. The agreement is just a confirmation from the two sides that they will abide by the international law when it comes to conflicts, which is allowing for safe passage for civilians who are caught up in the conflict to be able to leave the areas where there's active fighting to a safer place, uh, and as well as uh, allowing uh, aid organizations uh, and the organizations concerned to check on welfare of prisoners of wars or, or those who've been arrested by either warring parties. Uh, it also allows for uh, the withdrawal from vital facilities, facilities like water plants, power plants, uh, and the refinery, which supplies a majority of the country. Now, that's the agreement that was signed, but it's not what people had hoped for. What they wanted was, even if temporary, a, tru a ceasefire, a truce that would end uh, the fighting, even if for a little bit, for civilians to be able to leave their homes and be able to access facilities like banks, uh, be able to go to the market to buy what they need, to store what they need, and for those who can, because a lot of them cannot, for those who can, to be able to leave the capital. Uh, so many people here say that this falls short of what they want uh, and that this agreement, even though it's the basic when it comes to what they need, uh, they say they do not believe would actually hold. Fighting is intensifying in the town of Al Jenaina, that's near the border of Sudan and Chad. Zain Basravi reports in the nearby town of Adre in eastern Chad. We're here in the town of Adre in Chad, across from the border with Sudan, not far away, just about a 30 or 40 minute drive, is the Sudanese town in the West Darfur region the town of Al Junaina. Now for days we've been hearing about an uptick in violence there and overnight we heard loud explosions, intermittent explosions, as well as what sounded like heavy machine gun fire coming from the Sudanese side of the border. Now it is impossible to know exactly what is happening on that side of the border at the moment, uh, but what we are hearing for sure, what we do know for sure is that there is ongoing fighting in West Darfur. What is it? What exactly is happening? Reports suggest that it is the Sudanese military trying to repel approaching armed groups that are approaching their base, that are approaching uh, the town of Al Janaina, that are approaching villages around Al Janaina and carrying out attacks. Now exactly who is behind these attacks is also something that remains unclear. Uh, the villagers, the, the residents of Sudan, Sudanese refugees fleeing into Chad have harrowing accounts of what is going on. They blame African Arab fighters, fighters they say are the RSF, fighters they say are the Janjaweed, for looting, pillaging and burning their villages and for indiscriminate killing. Now the Chad government, the Chad military here on the border is carefully patrolling those border areas. They say they are trying to make sure that the fighting is contained to Sudan, but the humanitarian corridors remain open and those people continue to flee on to Chad's side of the border in search of safety. The UN, Chad's government, as well as the military intelligence here in Adre tell us that over the last few days they've seen an influx of between 20 and 25,000 people just from uh, the instability over the last few days, effectively doubling the overall number of refugees, nearly doubling the, that overall number since the conflict in Sudan began around four weeks ago. Now what they are telling us is that doubling is going to create an enormous strain on resources. The UN has uh, requested for emergency funding to cope with the crisis and the initial estimates of nearly 100,000 refugees fleeing from Sudan into Chad. That is becoming a ground reality here now and fighting in El Junaina seems to be getting worse. After decades of conflict in their homeland, more than 800,000 South Sudanese fled to Sudan. Thousands of them are now returning home, leading to a major humanitarian and logistical crisis. Paramatasa reports from Juba. Aid agencies are bringing in more staff and whatever resources they have to help thousands of people fleeing the conflict in Sudan. The humanitarian needs are overwhelming. People arrive every day. Thousands are living in transit camps. Most are South Sudanese, waiting to move away from the border as quickly as possible. It's a logistical challenge. I was working the European migrant and refugee crisis in 2015 and it took us weeks to set up a logistical system to help people move across the borders and to the destinations that they wanted. 
And South Sudan is a lot more complicated when it comes to accessibility, roads, enormous distances. Aid agencies are appealing for an additional $96 million to assist people arriving here. The government is evacuating some refugees and returnees, but with few planes and resources, it's not enough. Sudan and South Sudan were one country until 2011. People in the South voted overwhelmingly for South Sudan to become an independent state. But the two still have strong economic and diplomatic ties, and what happens across the border will affect what happens here. That's why South Sudan is leading mediation efforts as part of the regional bloc IGAD to get Sudan's warring sides to stop fighting. And that's why the government has decided to keep our embassy open in Khartoum. We are not going to vacate like the rest. We believe we are also Sudanese like them. And if they are in trouble, we need to be on the spot so that this communication can be encouraged. The UN Refugee Agency expects 240,000 people to flee to South Sudan. A few weeks ago, many of these families had relatively ordinary lives. Now they find themselves with little or nothing at all. Harumatasa Al Jazeera, Juba.